it's not about like this didn't work it's a failure it's like it didn't work how can i figure this out and make it work it's a very i've learned to reframe being an entrepreneur being in business you know not put you know putting one foot in front of the other and taking baby steps and just you know going down a different path or just you know reformatting as I go rather than oh it didn't work nobody showed this is horrible I don't know what I'm doing you know we we do we just have to find our voice and keep figuring out how they're going to hear it from us this is therapist clubhouse a podcast for private practice entrepreneurs I'm Annie Schusler. This week, I'm talking to Dr. Robin Rocket, a private practice entrepreneur in Marin, California. Listen as she talks about working through her fears and embracing the niche of single and overwhelmed moms. In just the last year, Robin's done a ton to reach and serve more single moms, including creating a podcast and offering new services. Welcome, Robin. Thanks for joining me in Therapist Clubhouse. Oh, thank you for having me, Annie. So I have known you for a while, and I'm excited to talk to you about your entrepreneurial journey. So you are a single mom, and mm-hmm. now you're serving single moms, and you've created a fabulous podcast. And so I want to jump into your podcast in just a few minutes. But first, how did you decide to work with single parents? Well, um, I've worked with children and families for a long time, and I'm a child psychologist. That's my specialty. But after my divorce, um, I had taken time off when I had my second kid from private practice. I had a private practice for about six years, took time off, built a new one in a new community. So I had this opportunity to go, okay, what do I want to do this time? Like, and where am I at? And I, you know, just getting older, more life experience one of my big passions was helping women. I wanted to do a mother support group. And I had all these ideas at the beginning when I was building my practice about rebuilding my practice about two years ago here in Marin. And because I was a single mom at this time, um, I just thought, yeah, I want to, I want to do something. And that's how the podcast got built. But my private practice, I really focus on women in transition, overwhelm, stress mothers generally. So it could be a new mom. It could be a mom returning to work, leaving work, going through a divorce or separation, a widower. But, you know, as women, we have all these life transitions that we move through and, you know, we tend to be hard on ourselves, have high expectations. And when you're a mom, if you're stressed out, that probably means your family is. Yes. <laughs> so that's yeah. self-care and that sort of just man- managing. And since that's what I've been working hard on personally, I think I had, I just felt like I had a lot to offer that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. If, if mom is not happy, nobody's happy. Uh, yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Was it scary to go after that niche? Very scary because when I had my practice before, right out right out the gate from being licensed, right, I was a general practitioner, and this is also I don't it didn't have a website back then. I mean, this was a long time ago, so uh, it was less needed. So when I took about four or five years off and got back into private practice, it was really a new world. You know, the website was becoming more and more essential, and that was constantly evolving what that should look like. And then I started listening to podcasts like particularly Melvin Varghese selling the couch and Joe Sanek practice the practice. And these guys were talking about, okay, if you want to rebuild a practice, you need to find your niche. And I remember thinking, Oh my gosh, like that's so scary. If I niche down, that's like a small part of the population. And will they call me? (laughs) Like it was really hard, but it's so counterintuitive, right? Like I need to grow my practice. I need to narrow my niche and it really works. And it, it really works. Yeah. It really works. But it's counterintuitive. Well, well, I think I think partly why it works, if you do it from your passion, mm-hmm. from where, from your heart, you know what I mean? Like, not just what's going to make you money, or yeah. but what, what, what really gets you up in the morning? Um, what do you have a lot to say? And I don't think you have, in my case, I have personal experience of being a single mom. I don't think you necessarily have to. You might have had you know, experience in your family, or you just, you're just really jazzed about working with somebody. But I, that's sort of how I figured out it was women in transition, single moms, because when I really thought about it, I love working with kids and all of that, but my best comes out when I'm in front of these women. That's, you know, whether it's in a group teaching a class or, you know, my private practice one-on-one. 
Mm -hmm. So you worked through that fear and it's really, it's worked. It's working. I mean, it's slow. I mean, Mm -hmm. it's, it's so funny because it's, you do, you make these transitions. And when you and I were working together, you were my business coach at the time. I was trying to work through my fears of putting myself out there. Like we talked about Mm -hmm. me doing like workshops and and I remember thinking, I don't know any, like, what if nobody shows up or, (laughs) you know, how do we do this? But then when we would talk about, well, okay, what do you want to say? How do you want to help them? What do they need? I had a lot to say. So I, I had to learn to just trust myself and take a big deep breath and just put myself out there, you know, Mm. in in different ways, like the podcast, that was a real big putting myself out there. Cause that wasn't, I think it's more common now, but I felt like even back then with, especially with therapists, at least in my area, um, some didn't even know what that was. Yeah. You, yeah, you were really ahead in this way. And I think podcasting is so wonderful and it's so perfect for you in particular, it really seems to bring out or be a way for you to leverage one of your superpowers. So you just talked about that you, when you get in front of your clients, it's really easy for you to be helpful. And then on the podcast, it's really clear when you're getting information for your right fit clients and for just your whole community, it's, you're really passionate about it. You want to, I can tell you want to ask the questions yeah. that are going to be most useful to them. And sometimes that overlaps with what's going to be most useful to you. But often it's like you just have this fire to, you know, open up the conversation, get the information. Yeah. 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 And, and, I, and I think it goes back to this this strong passion to help women through these different times in their lives. Because I've been now through a lot of different stages um, as a woman in different transitions. Yeah. And the podcasting you know, I remember when I first was thinking about it and I was listening to Melvin and he, he had a course on it to help therapists create. I thought, well, would I want to do that? I was building my private practice in a new community. Right. Yeah. So I had been licensed over 10 years. I had all this experience in hospital settings, all different things, trying to niche down. And I had an option between podcast or blogging to sort of help continue to get my name out, help me network, help, help sort of me commit, connect within my own community, even in Marin. And because I was a single mom, I just kind of felt like writing a blog every week was just not, it just wasn't going to be realistic. But I love talking to people. And I thought, well, if I just have meet somebody in their office or they come to my office or kind of sometimes they come to my home and we just have a chat about a topic, which I would love to do anyway, (laughs) Um, you know, and I'll record it. And that's pretty, and I thought I can do that. It was really scary, but it turned out when I would call other therapists to say, Hey, you know, would you mind talking about, you know, mediation or collaborative divorce or, you know, working with families? They were excited. They were nervous. Like, Oh, I've never been on a podcast before, but I knew from working and collaborating with them or hearing about them from other people that they were amazing. And I wanted my community to hear about it. So it was really, it's, it's, become really a really cool tool to not only network but gain more information and then build resources for you know single parents out there. Yeah, so you're doing so many things at once with the way that you're podcasting and doing your networking and content creation kind of at the same time. So it's really efficient if we think about it that way. Yeah, and um and when I sit down with somebody for about 30 minutes to talk with them you know, they remember me. So if I've never yeah. met them before, you know, it's a, it's been a nice way to get referrals. Um, yeah, people really, you really get to know someone on a more personal level. It's similar to going and having coffee with them too. Right. But, mm-hmm. but they were also kind of getting, and it, it feels good to put them on the podcast, to have their picture or their website, have people be able to connect with them. Like I, it, it feels good to share them, not just like, yes, I'll refer my next private practice client, you know, that may not be a good fit for me, but could be for you. But I also have now put you out in the world and that's a really cool thing. Do you do it that way? Do you have people come to you? You do it in person? I do it all. Yeah, I've done. It depends on, I mean, if they're not local, I do it online. Mm -hmm. But if they are local, I've gone to their offices or they've come to my home. Sometimes they come to my office. I mean, it's podcasting. You need a laptop and a microphone and a headset. I mean, it's not, the tools aren't really big. And so you're pretty mobile and we're in a quiet room. Yeah. And that's like, that's what we're doing right now. We've got, we're 
you know, just for other people, to, I know you know this, Robin, but we're like on <laughs> Skype and we both have our headphones and our like, you know, microphones that are not super expensive. That's right. And yeah, it's amazing. So are our clients finding you through the podcast? How is that working? Um, not so much. So okay. that hasn't turned out. I, 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 they have, but more coaching clients. So if we're talking about my private practice, no. Um, but I have been referred by other therapists mm -hmm. because they know about my podcast and they now kind of see me as an expert. So I'm definitely getting women referrals through that, um, particularly single moms. And then, um, so not directly through the podcast to build the therapy practice part, but indirectly through those colleague, I mean, your expertise, your status of, of being an expert has really grown. Yeah. Yeah. And then I've also now I'm creating a uh, parent coaching business. So I'm holding, you know, parent coaching sessions. I've, I've gotten a few from that and a, a listening coaching, listening group. Um, that's kind of like a hand in hand model. And that's, that oh. is solely through the podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Tell us about that. Tell us about those yeah. programs. Yeah, it's exciting. So I, um, you know, I, I'm a psychologist, so I have to practice within California. <clears throat> but I really, really love, you know, talking about kids and parenting and, <clears throat> excuse me, just how you can, how you can kind of understand the, the kid and the system and how as a team they can support their child. So, and I have a, kind of a parenting through connection model that I use as well as my psychodynamic attachment based sort of foundation in my work, um, as a therapist. And so what I've done is I've offered parent coaching so they can buy it, you know, like one session or for a discount, three sessions for 50 minutes, it's on the phone and we just identify, you know, the issue and, and we get into it on what, you know, pragmatically right on, I coach them through how they can work on it. And if they buy like three that we meet every other week or every week. And so they're having time to practice it and then come back and report and we keep kind of tweaking it. Um, and you know, if they've listened to them, the thing is if they've listening to my podcast, they've, it's amazing how quickly they, we have a connection. So at first I do a 15 minute free consultation, right. To just, you know, sift out how, if I'm going to be a good fit yeah. for their coaching, but immediately they're like, Oh, Robin, it's your podcast is so great. And I get so much help and this and that. And it's so neat to hear your voice. And you know, you don't get that when a, you get a cold call from a client yeah. in practice. Right. So it's very, it, it's very humbling and really neat because quickly we have a rapport and they know already a little bit because in my podcast, I'll talk about, you know, parenting styles and hand in hand and how they can help their kids and different things. So if you, if you've listened to some of my, you know, episodes, you kind of get an understanding of how I'm probably going to be helping you. And so we're on the same page quickly. So that's been really, that's been really neat. And then I, then I'm also creating a um, listening group and I have right now I have like three women in there and that's really powerful because, and again, they're, they're all podcast listeners and they all have very different stories and we all basically listen to each other and I coach them through maybe some parenting if they need that, but it's really for them to not feel so alone to hear that everyone's kind of struggling and how we're all kind of moving through this together. And so, yeah, I'm really excited about it. And they're all using the hand in hand or they're all learning the hand in hand parenting approach. Exactly. So when I coach mm -hmm. them in those listening groups, I'm using those tools and I have them go, I, I'm going to, I'm thinking of, it's my first group I'm starting. So I think I'm going to sort of probably formalize it a little more, like do a little bit of teaching and a little bit of the listening. So right now I just wanted to get a feel for this. Um, but the other thing I'm doing that's purely through my podcast, I just finished up, well, well, today's the last day of a telesummit. Mm. So I, I did, um, 10 interviews on the three different topics. It's called the single parent summit. And I, I did uh, finances, dating and parenting. And I did video interviews pretty much like my podcast, but instead of video interview that I recorded and we edited and we, um, and then helped telesummits work is that all the speakers involved share it with their community on their social media and on their newsletters and whatnot. And so it builds an email list, which is something I've been 
working to do so that I can continue to do more things like, you know, coaching and, and webinars and things like that. So that's really exciting because I was able to get, you know, a, a decent amount of emails, but it was really fun again to do that. And then that's, I was just asked last week to be on somebody else's telesummit. So it feels like, and it wasn't that hard to get people to do something like that with me because I'm a, I just had my 52nd episode on my podcast. So they go and they see solo parent life and they go, Whoa, you know, she's got a lot of content. She's every week. She's consistent. She's, she's doing something here. I want to be, I want to have her on and speak about that. And so that's been, that's been really cool that yes. it's, it's a strong platform now. It wasn't like that at the beginning, but it's a strong platform now to get guests to come on, but also to be guests on other podcasts and to do other things with other people online. Absolutely. So I just want to like pause there and acknowledge like you've done like as we're recording this and then it'll be even more (laughs) when this, when this goes public, like you have done this 52 times. Like that's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. How does that feel? It feels so good. I would never would have thought. Yeah. I, I just really didn't know how this was going to go when I did it, the, you know, the podcast. So, yeah. 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 So cool. And then it's just, you couldn't have known when you started. I mean, you knew some really cool things were going to happen and you had some really great ideas, but it's like now that you're doing it and you've got such a platform, all of these other possibilities start you know, showing up. It's very cool. They do. I mean, you and I had talked about when we were working together, um, an ebook and I remember mm-hmm. at the time going, Oh man, that's like, I don't even know where I would begin. Mm-hmm. But now that I have 52 episodes, um, I have a lot of content, uh, and I've done some of those episodes myself. So I have my own kind of written content that I've spoke about on the podcast. So now I'm going to put together an ebook for, you know, single parents. I'm probably going to start off with co-parenting. Um, and then from the ebook, do webinars and create, create content from that and get a feel for my audience on what is working and not working. And then eventually an e-course. Yes. So I've got kind of a plan, right? But, you know, I want to, I need to connect more and do more, what on, you know, webinars and coaching with my clients to sort of see sort of what, you know, what kind of content's really relevant for them and what I, what I don't need. But, but I, again, it's, it is exciting. And that, that took, I think the thing here is it, it takes time. Mm-hmm. It's like when you put your website up mm-hmm. and they don't start calling immediately, it yeah. usually takes a few months, you know, to get sort of your, the teeth and Google and the analytics and, you know, for people to find you and stuff like that. But even now I'm, I would say now I'm getting calls from my website. So that for my private practice, it's either previous clients, colleagues, um, or my website. They'll read my website, which is my niche, right? Mm -hmm. Overwhelmed, stressed women. And they call and be like, I read your website. Like, I've got to see you. And that feels so good. But that took a while. That took months to sort of. And that's when you know, like your, your copy is really working, right? Yes. You know, the words on your website are really working and you've written them in a way that speaks directly to the people you really want to work with. Yeah. That's right. I want to back up a little bit on something you were saying about, you know, creating things, testing them as you're creating them, like Mm -hmm. going slowly so that what you end up with is going to be so great and so relevant to the people you want to serve. Like you're, you've got the podcast, so you already know what the episodes are that people are kind of most hooked into and most Mm -hmm. talking about. And then you've also got like this small group of women you're working with, which I always think is the very best way to grow something fantastic is to have all of this experience, this deep experience working Mm -hmm. with a small group. So I know people Mm -hmm. sometimes get these fantasies of like, I'm going to do an e-course. I'm going to start writing it and then I'm going to sell it. And like the way you're doing it is so smart and, and absolutely will work because it's based on what is really happening and what's really helping these particular people. Yeah. Thank you, Andy. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to, trying to be, it's hard to be patient, Mm -hmm. but I'm learning. And I, you know, I listen to like, you know, Amy Porterfield and Pat Flynn, their podcast where they talk a lot about 
marketing online and social media, but that's a big message they say mm. is you, you really, you've got to slow down and connect with who you're trying to create this content for because it's a lot of work to do and, you know, an ebook and an e-course and you don't want to dive into that. And then, you know, birds are chirping, right? Nobody's calling kind of thing. And, and I also mm. think, um, doing things that are less risky. So like I, I'm going to do some after this telesummit in October, November, I, I'm going to put together like I've kind of thought it through yet, but I'm thinking about some webinars like either twice a month or um, three times a month on different topics. Now I may get nobody showing up to a webinar or I may get, you know, five people or 50 people, but I'm not, I'm going to not stay too attached because I'm kind of trying it out, you know, and I could use my podcast to get the word out, which is really helpful. And then, you know, my listservs and all that I have locally, but that's my test run on sort of, okay, what I'm going to put myself out there, but I'm also going to, you know, take note on whether this is going to work or if I need to keep tweaking it until it, it, it resonates with people and they show up. Nice. Yeah. And as you, as you create those webinars, you just get so much information. Yeah, because even if I have like five people, Mm -hmm. I can do a webinar on a topic like co-parenting. And at the end, I can say, hey, how was this? And Mm -hmm. what do you want to hear more about? And Mm -hmm. write that down. (laughs) Yeah. 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 What was most helpful? What do you want more of? What's like your number one problem right now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think you're going to get a lot more than five people considering that you've got this (laughs) platform. But I think you're absolutely right about that. That was something you and I talked about, you know, like... Mm -hmm we were talking about doing me doing workshops with, with mothers and stuff, you know, just, just show up. Mm -hmm. (laughs) People may or may not show up, but eventually they will, you know, be consistent, put yourself out there and then, you know, keep kind of tweaking it until they do. And that, that was really helpful because it's a reminder, like, it's not about like this didn't work. It's a failure. It's like, it didn't work. How can I figure this out and make it work? It's a very, I've learned to reframe, being an entrepreneur, being a business, you know, not put, you know, putting one foot in front of the other and taking baby steps and just, you know, going down a different path or just, you know, reformatting as I go rather than, Oh, it didn't work. Nobody showed this is horrible. I don't know what I'm doing. You know, we, we do, we just have to find our voice and keep figuring out how they're going to hear it from us. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it's just like, I mean, this just, this just came into my head, Robin, but it's just like cooking. Like nobody is just instantly a great cook, right? We have to, (laughs) I'm like teaching my kids how to cook right now. And they just have to make certain mistakes, even if I'm there guiding them. Like, yeah, it's just, it's just like anything in life. Yeah, we've, we've got to keep trying different things to figure out what works, even if we're following a great recipe. I'm loving That's this right. new metaphor. <laughs> <laughs> it is true, though, oh. right? You don't you add too much salt, or you forget the salt, or too much baking soda, or, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, as long as you notice it, then it's not really a failure. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So, will you tell me about? what you charge right now in your, in your two different ways of working in coaching and in therapy? Sure. Yeah. So in my private practice, I charge 185 a session. Um, and that's actually for 45 minutes. I went out, went from the 50 to 45. I was in a group practice and they did 45 minutes. It was all insurance based. And I moved off of that group practice, as you recall, to go into solo practice. And I kept that model because it's actually really helpful in scheduling people. You get a little more flexibility um, on that so I can fit more people in and it's time and then take a break as opposed to having this kind of 10 minutes of dead space over and over and a whole hour, right, for for a client. Okay, So 180, 185 and then for coaching, um, it's 150 and that's that is for an hour to sort of really get into it. And that's over the phone. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. How do you feel about your fees? I feel good. I, because how my practice is kids and teens, I've been told I should raise it. And I, Mm -hmm. it's 185 already felt really high. So, so I don't know. I mean, I feel good about it. People, when I got comfortable with that number, the clients are fine. Mm-hmm. I mean, so it's not that they're like stressed out or, you know, upset, like what you charge what? And again, I, I, I'm at market value, but 
I have been told even by clients, oh, that's okay, because they've met other people, you know, who would charge a little more. So I, so I am, I'm thinking about that. I'm just kind of like, well, it, it's such a big leap already. I think mm-hmm. when we put ourselves out there and wrap our brains that we are really worthy of this and that it's important. We need to value ourselves, but, um, but it is still hard to put a price tag on it. So, yeah. And so like, it's sound, I guess like what I'm hearing is like, it feels right for now and like that it might be going up. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. Have you ever had, and maybe for you, it was when you left the group practice, but I'd be curious what your answer is to this. Have you ever had a low or scary moment in your business? Oh yeah. So actually recently, so the notorious summer, right? Yes. Yes. (laughs) Um, uh, so July is inevitably really low. So is December. I've kind of tracked this now the last few years that July is the lowest month in December, partly July holidays and either I'm on vacation or my clients are, um, and then December, because, uh, you know, a lot of people are traveling or just want to take the time off when their kids are out of school. And I think I see a lot of parents and or kids. So I'm on, I'm, I'm on that school schedule in general, even with most of the adults I see. And that's hard. The, the other piece, too, is when school started, I had a couple of kid clients pulled, which, you know, can happen. Right. And for no reason. I mean, it, it's complicated, but not not helpful to the children. And those things are scary because in the private practice, they come out of the, they come out of nowhere sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes you can anticipate, I can anticipate July and December and I can budget for that, right? Save more, have more in, in my savings so I can compensate for those lower months in the summer and do more networking and just refocus my time. And, but then the other ups and downs of people coming and going in your practice, you know, is hard. And that's the, that's why the podcasting and doing the summit and doing things online has it, it continues to motivate me because I love my private practice, but I, I want to have some more passive income to help mm-hmm. compensate for the up and downs um, so that it all kind of flows together, you know, kind of thing. Yeah. So that's, so, so it sounds like that's part of how you get through the low or scary moments is by building something else slowly yep. over time. Yeah. That's really yeah. cool. Yeah. Yeah. And if you could time travel to when you first started your private practice, what would you tell the Robin of that time? Oh, particularly the Robin that was just licensed, like the newbie yeah. <laughs> therapist. It's going to be okay. Hmm. You know, like, like they're just no, just work with people, enjoy it, pay attention to who you're really enjoying and want to help more. And just go for that, you know, believe in yourself that what you have to offer, people are, are going to feel that from you and they're going to want, they're going to want more of it. Beautiful. Yeah. And will you join me for a listener question? Will you help me yeah. answer something? Okay, yeah, let's awesome. do it. Listener question. Good. So you're the perfect person for this. I've been considering either creating a podcast or a blog to help me market my practice, which is more effective. And so it's not that we have to have the right answer for this person, but I just thought you'd be the perfect person to help me talk about this. Yeah. Well, I already talked a little bit. I mean, I struggled with this Mm -hmm. when I started my second private practice after my break. Should I do a blog or should I do a podcast? And blogging at that time was a lot hotter you know, Mm -hmm. kind of thing Mm -hmm. to do. I think now um, podcasting is just becoming as big. I I would encourage the the person to really think about what, which one fits best with their, their time, their lifestyle and their personality. Mm -hmm. Cause I think some people are born writers and they're passionate about it and they can do it fairly quickly and easily and fit it in their time. And it's not stressful. It's something that's you know, that they like to do. And if that's the case, I would go with the blogging around what that passion is and what that niche is. And if it's, you know, like what I was saying about me, I have less time and I like talking to people. It fires me up even more. Um, And I felt like I would be good at drawing out more information than just writing about it. The podcasting was more the way to go. But what's clear is they're both time consuming. So you really want to go which one will fit best for me and the time I can give to either one. 
Beautiful. It's like a mic drop. That's perfect. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Like which one will go with your superpowers the best? Which one will stress you out the least? Like you said, Yeah. which one will give you more energy? I know for me, like I've pivoted. I used to blog and now I, um, I'm not doing that very much and I'm podcasting. And for me right now, it's just a way better fit. So we don't have the right answer here, but um, the one that's going to be more effective is going to be the one that you really want to maintain, like Robin said. Yeah, that's the big piece, whether mm-hmm. you're blogging or podcasting, is to be consistent. What you know, Whether it's once a week, three times a week, once a month, it, it, people, who, whoever your audience is, whoever, they need to see that you're, you have something to say and they can count on you to come around to keep saying something about it, you know, and that's what builds expertise too, right? That's why people now see me as more an expert on single parenting because they see the content. And by the way, with the nice thing about podcasting, but you, you might've found this with, with going from blogging and podcasting, but with podcasting, you can create blogs. Yes. So each episode I have my show notes and I can create something or even spin off and write something more about that. And if you've blogged, about different things for a long time, you could use those and do podcasts. So in some ways, and there are some people doing this, I don't know how they have time, Mm -hmm. are doing both. They'll do a blog and then also get on a mic and talk that through so that they're reaching their audience in different ways, which is brilliant if you have the time to do that. Absolutely. Yeah. Like I would say, start with one or the other. And you're right. Like you already sort of have a blog. You have written content when you do a, a podcast. Yeah. Great. So what is the very best place for therapists to find you and throw compliments at you? (laughs) Um, That's very sweet. So let's see. So for the podcast, it would be Mm soloparentlife.com. And for me, if you're in Marin, the Bay Area, and um, you want some support for mothers or kids or teens, you can go to Dr. Robin Rocket. Dot com. So DR and then Robin with two B's and rocket with two T's <laughs> dot com. Which is just about the coolest name. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, mom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much, Robin. This has been really fun and really helpful. Thank you, Annie. I really appreciate you having me on and you're doing great work. This is a great podcast. So yay. Here's an idea to try. Idea to try. Robin's enthusiasm is infectious. After talking to her, I'm feeling jazzed. My idea to try this week is to articulate your passion about your work. The next time you're talking about what you do and who you work with, tap into your excitement about your work. Pause and breathe and smile. Think about who you love to work with the most. And then let that energy guide you in how you talk about your work. So you can try this today. It could be the next time you're talking to a colleague. It could even be at a party. Wherever it is, let that passion out when you're talking about your work. Now, if you're not networking as much as you'd like to be, I want to give you something to help you take action. Networking is one of the fastest ways to build your practice if you do it right. But as an introvert, I know it's not always easy. Go to coachingwithannie.com slash free dash training and grab my free challenge, 30 days to a strong referral network. When you get that, you're going to have 20 short assignments to do in 30 days to help you bring in more clients quickly without any weird or cheesy or salesy tactics. So that's at coachingwithannie.com slash free dash training. Thanks for listening to Therapist Clubhouse. Please take 30 seconds to go and rate and review Therapist Clubhouse in iTunes and tell your therapist friends to listen so we can support them too. To get step-by-step instructions on creating a referral network, go to coachingwithannie.com slash free dash trainings. I'll see you next week. Yeah, you're championing, you're championing, okay. I'm not doing well with this word. <laughs> <laughs>